So this means I'm looking for people that are kind, fair, and effective problem solvers. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about building your mod team. We talked about leadership techniques in a previous video, and I'm going to link that up in the card, and I do recommend watching that before watching this one, because we're going to build on that in this video. Running a roleplay all by yourself is kind of like doing it on hard mode. I don't recommend it for most people. I recommend having at least a few people help you with moderation duties, even for the smallest of roleplays. So building that mod team is what we're going to talk about today. So remember what we said in the last video was to find out what things you're bad at and what things you really don't like doing and delegate those things. So first, have a list of things that you're planning on delegating and start thinking about how you might fill those roles. What does a person need to do to make you think they're suited for those tasks? How are you going to recognize it when you meet someone who is suited for those tasks? Keep this in the back of your mind because this is how we're going to set the basis for how we choose who's on your team. But first, let's back up. Before you choose anyone, you need to know what exactly the goals are for your team. These should be super high level questions. Things like, what is the central purpose of my mod team? Or what is the outcome I want my mod team to achieve? For me, the purpose of my mod team is to help me review and approve applications, to talk to players when there's a problem, and to take on any tasks when I'm busy. So this means I'm looking for people that are kind, fair, and effective problem solvers. Your purpose and what that purpose means for your mod team might look the same or it might look different. Regardless, you need to think about it and have a clear idea before you pick anyone. This is because in addition to the specific tasks you need your mod team to do, your other players will look to your mod team as a sort of barometer of the roleplay. Even if they don't intend to, a sort of monkey see monkey do sort of thing will happen. Say, for example, you have a moderator making your graphics and they're really good at it, your graphics are awesome, but this particular person is annoying out of character. Maybe, for example, they're constantly drawing attention to themselves and not letting anyone else talk about themselves. If you keep this person a mod, even though that behavior has nothing to do with their mod duties, you are signing off that that behavior is okay. So knowing that overall picture of what you want your mod team to stand for is important. Now that you know that, it's time to actually build your team. So how do you pick the right people? There are essentially two methods. One is application. One is to observe people and approach them. I use the latter. I am not a fan of using an application to select mods, so we're not really going to go into too much depth on that. But if you do want me to talk about that in another video, let me know down below because I could make a video that talks about applications. So for my method, what I do is I watch everyone in my community, I watch people that are in communities that I'm associated with, and I'm just kind of observing and collecting information on those people. And then when I see someone that both can do the task that I want done and fits the goals of my mod team, I approach them and I ask them if they want to be a mod. Now, I do not expect equality among my mods. What I mean by that is some mods will be more active than others. Some mods will be better than others. All of that's fine. All I want to make sure of is that all of my mods are kind, fair, and effective problem solvers. They need that to join the team in the first place. Now, sometimes I will ask someone to mod that maybe fits the goals, but doesn't necessarily have the right skills. This is useful for things that I can do, but I don't really want to do. And that's because I can teach this person how to do the things that I want done. If you select someone like this, make sure that person is eager and excited to learn. You can't teach someone who's unwilling. Now, when I'm doing this, sometimes I will watch someone for months before I decide if they are mod material or not. And sometimes I have people that I know will be good mods, but I don't ask them because I don't need mods at that moment. But maybe someday the roleplay grows, maybe someday my current mods have to step down, and I have that person in the back of my mind. Now, when you approach people to ask them to be mods, it's important that you have trust and integrity with them. Be clear with what you want and why you want it. 
and make sure to ask if they want to be a mod. Don't just make them one. And not everyone that's suited to be a mod is going to want to be a mod, so make sure there's room for them to say no. Ultimately, they need to decide. Maybe they're busy. Maybe they know they're not as dedicated as they seem. Maybe they know what they act like when they get a little bit of power and they don't like that. Whatever the reason, declining is okay. Now, if they say yes, explain to them what being a mod means what specific tasks you want them to do, and what the time commitment is going to be like. Then check for understanding, make sure that they get it and they're good to go and they don't have any questions, and then actually make them a mod. Now I recommend adding mods only one or two people at a time. New mods need time to acclimate to their position and responsibilities, so make sure you don't overwhelm yourself by making too many people a mod at the same time, and then you end up losing control of your roleplay. All right, so this video has really been about building your mod team in the sense of selecting your mods. There is more to say about maintaining your mod team once you've built it, so I'll probably make a video on that in the future. Let me know down below what your questions are with that so that I make sure those questions get answered in that future video.